Hi, my name is Tricia Way, and I am an assistant professor of justice studies here at Chestnut Hill College. I teach um, a lot of restorative justice courses. So I'd like to talk with you about restorative justice, but ultimately about restorative living. Um, but I have a bit of a story that leads up to that, about how I got involved with restorative justice. Um, in 2010, I decided that I wanted to be an inside out instructor. If you're not familiar with Inside Out, it is a college course that takes place in a prison and the students are both um, incarcerated students who reside in that prison and campus-based students who travel to the prison each week to be in class together with their incarcerated classmates. Um, usually last for semester, it's discussion-based, students read books, um, write papers, just a regular college class. So in 2010, I signed up for the training. It's a week-long training. And at that time, two days of that training were spent inside of a prison. So I was going in for those two full days into Greaterford Prison, which was a men's maximum security prison out in Collegeville. And there were a couple things that happened during those two days that, that truly changed my life forever. Um, I had never been in a prison before. My only experience with prisons was indirect, um, unlike a lot of people, um, because of my race and class um, privileges. I had only indirectly experienced prisons and only through our news media and entertainment media. So I was afraid, um, but I was doing it anyway because I wanted to make sure that if I was teaching in higher education, that I would be extending the opportunity to people who don't usually have that opportunity. And when I learned about Inside Out, I thought, well, this is how I'm gonna teach in higher education. So during that week, two things happened. One, um, during those two full days inside, there were times when I could completely forget, I did completely forget that I was in a men's maximum security prison. I forgot that I was engaging with people who were, um, prisoners, criminals serving life sentences, many of them. I was just having conversations with human beings, people I could relate to, people I had differences from, but people who I also had a lot of similarities with, and we were laughing, and we were enjoying meals with one another, and it was like earth shattering given what I have taken in from our, from the ways that people in prison are represented in society. So that was really profound, and it happened quite a bit during those two full days where I just really connected with the people I had met and began, began to care about them, learn their stories, and they learned mine. The second thing was an activity that we were doing it was called a wagon wheel where there are like circles of people moving and you move seats and you are across from different people and talking about different things. So I sat across from this man, Paul. And I don't even remember what the prompt was, but I ended up saying to him that I was afraid to teach inside out. I didn't know if I was cut out for it. Uh, I didn't know if I was the kind of person who could do it. And he looked at me and really simply he said, well, maybe you could decide to be the kind of person who does it. And I had never thought about probably anything like that before. I think we can tend to get so stuck in who we think we are that changing and changing dramatically feels, uh, I don't know, impossible. But here was this man who was serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole, who basically was telling me that you can decide to change your life uh, and you can make that choice. And he had. So it turns out that Paul is the person who came up with the idea of an inside out course. He had met a group of students who were visiting the prison on a tour, but they had a really good conversation at the end of the tour. And from there, he thought, well, wouldn't it be great to just get together for a whole semester to take a class together and read and write and do exactly what inside out became. And uh, with Lori Pampa, who, who created the program on the outside, Paul's idea came to life and has touched tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people's lives. And yet he remains behind bars for the rest of his life. Paul is an amazing person. He is a changed man. He has decided to make the changes in his life and make a meaningful life for himself, even though as things are right now, he is destined to stay there 
until he dies. And so what what happened to me from those two days and, and every time I've been inside a prison ever since is this realization that um, we are causing a whole lot of harm by sending people away to prison for decades in isolation from us. Um, it just raised so many questions for me about what we're doing and how we respond to harm and crime and how people are capable of change. Even people we think aren't or people who we think have such, caused such egregious harm that we just want them to be distilled into that label of that harm that they caused. So this prompted a, a, a long journey for me of um, learning about and participating in and deeply internalizing the values, principles of restorative justice. Um, what people know about restorative justice, if they know anything, is that, um, checking the time, that it is when someone commits a crime, uh, they maybe have an encounter in a circle with the person that they've harmed, maybe some other people are there, and it is uh, a, a way of responding to harm. Some people misunderstand it as a way to prevent people from doing that harm again. But it's really based on this idea that um, we all harm one another, and we all need healing, and we can come together to do that healing with one another. It is possible. We don't need to send people away to prison for the rest of their lives. In fact, that is, seems much more rarely a means to healing. Um, but instead, when we recognize that we are capable of change and that we all harm. And so what does that have to do with restorative living? Um, it's a slight shift. If restorative justice practices help us heal and respond to harm. The next logical step for me has been to think about, well, how do we live on an everyday basis so that we actually need fewer instances of restorative practices where we're responding to harm, where we instead choose to live fully being present with ourselves and with anyone we come into relationship with to recognize that we are all human and that we are all we all have dignity and we can all live in full relationship with one another through our daily practices rather than just some isolated restorative justice circle that is for those people who cause harm and have been harmed if we really want to have those kinds of encounters for the people who need it then it's really all of us since we all do harm and need healing so I think I'm maybe over the time now, but there are ways that we can just live intentionally by pausing, by getting present, by listening, by taking seriously every relationship in our lives and honoring the dignity of ourselves and any of those people we're in relationship on a regular basis. And this includes all people those inside prisons, those who have been harmed by the people inside prisons. That line is very gray, by the way. That's another thing I learned, is that the people who are serving time in prisons have also been victimized in their lives. And so we need to spread this concept of how to live restoratively all the time and how to change the structures in our society so that we're all able to live more restorative lives or live in right relationship with one another. Um, thank you for your time. There's more to say, but our time is done for now. Um, take care of yourself, especially headed into next week, whatever, whatever's on the horizon for the election week. I wish you well. I wish you presence with yourself and others. Thank you.